Tyndall is Ireland's uh, largest research institute and um, we are obviously involved in high technology research and the subjects we pursue are in making electronic materials and devices and systems. Now what are they for? Okay, so people have a number of problems and issues that they want to address and these are communications. We all like to talk on the phone, we like to have video on demand in our homes, we like broadband internet. So communications is a big issue. Um, healthcare, care of our environment, the way we use energy. Everybody's very worried about global warming. Our technologies are primarily about how to address those issues using information and communication technology. So if we look at um, the problem of communications, one of the big issues is how we transmit lots of information cheaply. And uh, not many people realize that when we make a mobile phone call or when we use the internet, we use uh, optical fibers to transmit the information uh, between cities, between within cities. And uh, they carry huge amounts of information. One of the problems we have now is the optical fibers are getting clogged with that information. So we need to devise ways of putting more information down single optical fibers. And a lot of our research is about that. We're all familiar with the silicon chip and what it does for us in our mobile phones and in our computers and our laptops. Um, crammed onto every single silicon chip are literally billions of transistors and they are exceedingly small. They are um, in size maybe 150 to 200 atoms across in the latest generation of, the, of silicon chips that have just been announced by Intel. And so nanoelectronics is about how to make transistors on silicon even smaller than that. And so we're concerned with the materials that are used, how the devices are actually constructed, what are the problems of making devices that will work at those scales. And uh, we're working very closely with a number of major companies and we have some of the world's leading scientists and engineers working on that topic here in Cork. We have a major activity in something we call microsystems. Now this is how do you put lots of different functions onto a single chip or crammed into a very small volume. And one of the big applications for that is, is me medicine and healthcare. So what we're doing here is using the te same technologies that are used for making silicon chips, but are using them in very different ways. So for example, we use a technology that is used for making etching structures on silicon chips. We use that to make very, very small needles, they're called micro needles. And they are big enough to penetrate the skin and very, very sharp and smooth, but they're so small that they don't reach the nerve endings and so they cause no pain. And we've, we're using these now to um, deliver drugs, to um, take body samples. So you can imagine them being used and we're looking at um, using them with our medical colleagues in UCC and elsewhere in things like cancer therapy and uh, the treatment of diabetes. One of the big issues um, that we all face is how to use energy more efficiently. In, certainly in, um, in the first world, buildings use between 40 and 50 percent of all the energy that's used in society. It's, it's a little known fact, but it is, it's true. So what we're concerned about is tr how to minimize the use of energy, how to make buildings more efficient. And of course, a lot of buildings are very old, so you don't want to go around cutting holes in walls and putting sensors in so you can see what's going on. So we're developing a family of sensors which can be placed on a wall inside an existing building and they detect the presence of people, temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide, all the things that you need to know to manage the operation of a building and then transmit that wirelessly back to a building energy management system. But the clever thing about these things is because you don't want to put batteries in, you don't want to be changing batteries, we've devised ways of actually taking the energy to operate the sensors from the environment, from things like ambient light and vibration and heat. And we now have the world's first device that will operate in a completely autonomous way, in a realistic, say, office environment without needing batteries. Here at Tyndall, we're, we're deeply honoured to be hosting Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh as part of their state visit to the uh, Republic of Ireland. And um, we will be showing them a number of um, leading technologies through demonstration while they're here. 
um, we'll be showing the fact that Ireland has world-leading research scientists and engineers creating um, things that can be seen and can be seen on an international stage and recognized for the excellence that they, they have. And uh, what we'll be showing is, um, in, in the nanoelectronics area, we'll be showing the first demonstration of a, um, a, radar, a, sing a radar on a single chip. Now you can imagine years ago, um, when radar was first invented, radar took a whole building to, to operate. Uh, now we've managed to cram it onto a, a chip which is about two millimeters square. And that can be used for remotely reading the, op uh, the heart in medical applications. So for example, it can be used for um, cardiac patients, it can be used for um, monitoring babies um, to, uh, for uh, sudden death syndrome. And um, we'll also be showing some of the technology that we've demonstrated for the future of silicon chips. Um, the, something that was invented here called the junctionless transistor will be, will be shown and talked about. And um, a couple of other demonstrations we'll be showing will be in the broadband uh, optical communications area and um, how, to, how we use that to bring f uh, optical information to the home through optical fibers. And then finally we'll be talking about our technologies for uh, microneedles, the ways we've, we've used silicon technology to make very tiny needles that can be used to uh, deliver drugs or take body samples without causing pain. Tyndall is a truly international research institute and we're recognized around the world for the excellence of the work that's done here by our scientists and engineers. And we have a truly cosmopolitan society working here. We have about 450 people based on site. Between 40 and 50 percent of those are Irish. Uh, 25 to 30 percent are uh, from elsewhere in the EU and the, the balance would be from the rest from all over the rest of the world so we have people here from um, uh, from Asia from the Americas and we're very proud to host such a cosmopolitan group of scientists and engineers the honor of hosting this state visit uh, or being a part of the state visit to Ireland is, is huge and clearly it gives us um, the opportunity to show the excellence of Tyndall's technology on the world stage and to show that Cork and Ireland can host um, a, a research institute of truly international standing. Tyndall has um, been uh, very privileged to receive uh, substantial uh, financial sponsorship from the Irish government through a number of agencies, uh, Science Foundation Ireland, Enterprise Ireland, uh, the IDA and um, the, the HEA have all been very important in establishing Tyndall for what it is. Without their funding it would have been impossible to produce the kind of internationally leading results that we do. Um, and it, you know, it depends on so many different things being put together. So for example, the HEA have been absolutely key in funding the facilities and the equipment. The Department of Enterprise, Trade and Innovation have funded uh, the, the buildings. Uh, Science Foundation Ireland fund people. You know, without them funding world-class researchers to come here, none of the work that we would do uh, we've done would have been possible and Enterprise Ireland foster very strong links with um, between ourselves and industry uh, through uh, instruments such as their um, competency centres. We're proud to host two competency centres here at Tyndall and uh, through their innovation partnership scheme. And the, the name Tyndall was adopted uh, to reflect the, um, the work of John Tyndall, the excellent Irish scientist who was born uh, in uh, the 19th century in Lachlan Bridge in County Carlow and uh, did enormously important work in the fields of light, guiding light and also in um, areas that are highly relevant to energy nowadays. He was the first person to um, describe what we now call the greenhouse effect and uh, the thing that is responsible for what we now recognize as, as global warming and to show the effects of trace gases in the atmosphere on that. So John Tyndall went on to become the director of the Royal Institution, that very important body in London, where he succeeded another very famous scientist, Michael Faraday. So Tyndall um, 
now works in these major areas of micro nanoelectronics, uh, photonics and microsystems. And um, we are very dependent upon um, research scientists who come here from all over the world, but also from closer, closer at hand. So we have very close links with University College Cork, of which we are uh, a part, and with Cork Institute of Technology. And we have uh, academics who are based there who do their research here on site.